So if you ask me what laser should I buy, I'm going to turn it right back on you. I'm going to ask, what do you want a laser to do? Do you want to do restorative dentistry? Do you want to treat periodontal disease? Or do you just want to trough around your crown preparations? But I'm also going to ask, what benefit do you think your patient's going to get from this technology? And what benefit do you think your office is going to get from this technology? But I also want to know what you're willing to invest in the time and the money to integrate this technology into your practice. But before we go there, you know, I think back when I first started in laser dentistry, I really had no clue what you could really do with a laser in a general practice. So what you can do with a laser is really only limited by your imagination and your understanding of laser physics and laser tissue interaction. Now, we're not going to go into great detail on laser physics and laser tissue interaction, but I'm going to give you what's called the lickety-split version of laser dentistry and laser physics, enough to give you a good understanding so you can be an informed buyer. So when we think of laser and laser light, that light gets absorbed into tissue, and we think of what it's being absorbed into as chromophores. And there are several common chromophores that we look at in dentistry, one of which is hemoglobin, another is melanin, and hemoglobin is just blood. Melanin, that's pigmentation, black pigmentation, usually associated with bacteria. In our case, in dentistry, it's usually Bacteroides melanogenicus or P. gingivalis, those bacteria that are often associated with periodontal disease. Another very common one is water, which makes up a big part of our bodies. Another one is hydroxyapatite, which is bone and teeth. If we think back to our high school physics, light can be thought of as having properties of little packets of energy or waves. In dentistry, it's just easier for us to think of waves, and we measure these waves from peak to peak or trough to trough. And a common unit of measurement that we use is nanometers. So in dentistry, we can refer to a laser as being an 810 nanometer laser or a 10,600 nanometer laser. Now remember, a laser only produces one wavelength of light.